Walking through the Centro Storico is truly like going back into time. The dream that was once wrong is truly still here. You just have to have an eye for it. You'll see it. You will definitely get a taste of eternity. We are making our way to Castel Sant'Angelo. Entering from the archway entrance Porta Angelica towards the Vatican Square, we see above it the secret passage called by the Romans Il Passetto di Borgo, the neighborhood passage. A secret passage above the wall that comes from the Vatican to the safety of Castel Sant'Angelo. More about that later. We're going towards uh, Castel Sant'Angelo from Via di Conciliazione. When suddenly, as we look up, we see this magnificent bronze angel that's sheathing its sword. It leaves quite an impression. And there's the rest of the Passetto di Borgo that goes right into the castle. We will get into the history and function of this wall a little bit later. And here we're looking back on Via Riconciliazione towards St. Peter's. As we walk along Lungo Tevere, before approaching the entrance to the castle, there's plenty of vendors selling all kinds of souvenirs. Almost bought one of those helmets. Came close. There's the entrance to the castle. But before entering, we're going to explore the surroundings, beginning with the famous Bridge of Angels. Nowhere in the world. This beautiful bridge and Castel Sant'Angelo, also known as the Mausoleum of Adrian, has a long and fascinating history. The construction of this great building started in the year 135 AD and finished just four years later. This was the final resting place for Hadrian, his family and future emperors. This included the bridge in front of the castle, except the angel statues which were added in the medieval times. Hadrian never got to see his mausoleum completed. He died just one year before its completion. The mausoleum that was later turned into a castle is located on the banks of the Tiber River in the heart of Rome. It's close to the Vatican City. As you approach the bridge, it makes a symbolic passageway where the humble and the proud are reminded of what they deserve. The statues of St. Peter holding the keys of heaven and St. Paul holding the broken sword the first angel holds up the flogging column to which Jesus was tied. The second angel holds the whips that wounded the Lord. The third angel presents the crown of thorns. The fourth angel observes with pity the face of Christ impressed in blood on the veil of Veronica. The fifth angel carries the garments and dice. The sixth angel holds the nails that pierce the hands and feet of Jesus. Seventh angel holds the cross. Eighth angel uncurls the superscripture. Ninth angel holds the sponge soaked with vinegar at the end of the stick. Tenth angel is the spear that wounded the Lord in the heart. All of the statues were designed by Bernini and some sculptured by Bernini himself. Let's look around the exterior of the castle. Bastion San John. The one on the other side is named uh, St. Matthew Bastion. The first change took place when the mausoleum was turned into a fortress during the decline of the Roman Empire. The fortress, however, not stopped the barbaric invasions and the sacking of Rome in the early 5th century. During the sacking, the majority of the decorations were stolen and much of the tomb content was scattered. The mausoleum took further damage when Rome was sacked once again in the 6th century. Up until the Middle Ages, Castel Sant'Angelo was owned by different Roman families until the Papal State took possession of the fortress in 1377. 
They saw great potential in the old fortress. It was strategically located at the northern entrance to Rome, close to both the Vatican City and the Tiber River. Pope Nicholas III quickly converted the old fortress into a proper castle and connected the castle to St. Peter's Basilica with the famous elevated passage that's now known as Passetto di Borgo and as seen earlier still exists today on the west side of the castle. The wall-like structure leading all the way to the Vatican City is a fortified passage atop of this wall and allowed for a quick and secure passage between the two buildings in case of danger since the Vatican was not fortified back then. The Pope would take refuge in the castle. Pope Alexander VI had then raised an additional cylindrical tower at the entrance of the bridge and around the walls dug a moat filled with the waters of the Tiber. It could still be seen today. The moat area around the castle today is a recreational area. You can enjoy it, walk around. There's a beautiful walkway above the outside of the moat that goes all around the castle perfect place to take a rest while walking through Rome. The front entrance is finally open. The castle really only lost its military function in 1925 when it was renovated and began to serve as a national museum which still does today. While the museum is certainly worth a visit, you should definitely explore the castle itself. The many different roles the castle has played are all here for its visitors to discover. All the way from the funeral passage of Adrian to the beautifully frescoed interiors from the papal expansions, as well as the defensive battlements of the Renaissance. Anyone that's into history and architecture will certainly enjoy a visit here. We will explore all the way to the top of the castle, where it will give a great view of Rome and some of its other monuments and buildings. St. Peter's Basilica in particular. It's amazing how different the bridge looks from above, with the statues and then looking into Lungo Tevere. What a beautiful view. We explored the outer and inner walls along with the courtyards filled with weird looking stone cannonballs and some kind of ballistic weapon. It would be interesting to see this thing in action. We visit the armory and a small room where guards can stay warm and out of the weather. Outside, the observation holes around the defense wall give some interesting panoramic scenery. As we walk along the top of the defense wall built during the medieval era around the mausoleum, we backtrack down to the original entrance of the Roman atrium through these gates. As you enter the mausoleum, the first thing you would have seen is a colossal statue of Emperor Adrian, as tall as this arch here. The Emperor's ashes were placed in the mausoleum together with his wife and his adopted son that died very young. And the mausoleum became a resting place for several of his successors. The last one was Emperor Caracalla in the year 217 AD. While the original structure design of the mausoleum is uncertain. Historians believe it was composed of a square base with a large cylindrical body crowned by a statue of Adrian riding a chariot. If Emperor Adrian would have only known that by building this mausoleum for himself and his family, he unknowingly protected Rome from future enemies. It would eventually be turned into a castle and protect Rome just a few centuries later and maybe for centuries to come you never know
It would be like taking the Lincoln Memorial in Washington, D.C. and turning it into a fortress to protect the Capitol. That's exactly what happened to them. They were trying to protect Rome at all costs, even at the cost of turning a mausoleum into a fortress. We watch it in movies, but it could happen to us. This is the chamber where it is believed that the urns containing the ashes of the emperors and their families were kept. It is said that the inside and outside surfaces of this mausoleum was all marble. This window opens up into the court of the angel where the marble statue of the angel sits today that originally was on top of the castle and replaced by the bronze statue during the 6th century. From here, we glimpse to the first terrace to see the original statue of the Archangel. We have now reached the third level into the court of the angel. This is the original angel that was put on the top of Castel Sant'Angelo. The bronze was later done. It's a great place to have lunch up here too, and you could sit and look at the panoramic scene. We are finally at the top of the terrace, and this is the best place to tell the story how this castle got its name. Around 540 AD, infected rats from Egypt hopped on a ship bound for Constantinople. In the next 50 years, the Justinian Plague, as it would be known, wiped out over 100 million people over half the population of Europe. The death list included the Pope of Rome, Pelagius II. In 590 AD, the newly ordained Pope Gregory I claimed to have witnessed the appearance of the Archangel Michael on top of the Hadrian's mausoleum, sheathing his sword. The Pope saw this as a sign that the Great Plague had finally come to an end. He was right about the plague after 50 years finally run its course. In thanks of the holy miracle, Pope Gregory renamed the mausoleum as Castel Sant'Angelo, the castle of the Holy Angel. And last, but not least, to see before leaving the view from the castle's upper terrace, directly over the Tiber and the heart of the Renaissance Quarter arguably one of the best views in Rome and way down there is the Vittoriano at Piazza Venezia take a good look around this is where Western civilization started their culture and philosophy brought forth so many ideologies and really not just influenced the West but civilized it as we know it. Let's not forget that Rome also was a republic before becoming an empire. And the history of the Republic era has many parallels to ours. St. Peter's Basilica and the square and Via di Conciliazione and there's Il Passetto di Borgo. It comes from St. Peter's palaces there all the way into Castel Sant'Angelo. A secret corridor connects the Castel Sant'Angelo with the Vatican. The corridor was used by Pope Clement VII and his Swiss guards to take refuge from Charles de Bourbon's army during the sack of Rome in 
1527. Overlooking the panoramic terrace stands the bronze statue of the angel sheeting its sword. That replaced the earlier marble version we seen at the court of the angel. Built by the 18th century Flemish sculptor Peter Verschiefel. This spectacular room of fresco symbolizes Paul III's conviction of the unbroken past. From the Roman emperors to the popes, the divine right to rule, and above all, the cultural responsibility to preserve the past for future generations. You can continue to spend the whole day in this castle. The amazing history and spectacular views left us quite moved. Thank you for coming along with us. Let's have a great future as we learn from the past.